Greetings all, Bruno Luce here with GLB Productions. Thanks for joining us for this video. Today I have a flashlight review for you, or as they say in the UK, a torch, or as we say here in Singapore, a torchlight. It is, as you can see, the Streamlight Stylus Pro USB, a USB rechargeable version of their very popular Stylus Pro pen light. This light is new for 2014 and I've been using it quite a bit and I think it's a very good sound engineer's light as well as a good all-around everyday carry general utility flashlight. First of all, some specifications. The light is 6.15 inches or 156 millimeters long. It weighs 1.9 ounces or 53.8 grams with the included proprietary lithium ion rechargeable battery. It has an aluminium alloy case which is type 2 hard anodized. It has a glass lens, let you see that there. Glass lens which is gasket sealed. It provides 70 lumens or 630 candela using a C4 LED and it has a runtime of 3.5 hours. Uh, one of the things that they provide you with on the back of the packaging is this runtime chart. As you can see here, it shows beginning at 70 lumens and dropping quite precipitously after three hours. Uh, it reaches about seven lumens and then it will switch off. The light, as you can see, is made in China and the light itself is IPX4 water resistant. Now, what this means is, is that the light is designed to resist water sprayed from all angles. The exact specifications for those of you who are propeller heads are 10 liters per minute at a pressure of 80 to 100 kilonewtons per meter square for five minutes. Good to know. It's also good to know that the, the light is not designed to be submerged and a large part of this is because of the USB recharging port which is concealed under this front cover. I'll show you that shortly. The light comes with the materials that you see on the table. You have the light itself, you have this Cordura sheath, a USB recharging cord and some literature. It also comes with this uh, small instruction manual that shows you how to use the light. So to begin with, let's have a look at the physical size of this light. On the table in front of you, I've got a Maglite Mini AA LED flashlight just for comparison. As you can see, the lights are approximately the same size in terms of length. The Streamlight Stylus Pro is quite a bit slimmer because its body obviously was originally designed to accommodate AAA batteries as opposed to the AA of the Maglite. And in addition to that, the Maglite has a slightly larger head. The other main difference is that the Streamlight has this push button switch on the end, whereas the Maglite uses the turn on and off using the head of the, uh, the, head of the flashlight method. So that's just some idea of the size. Let's get that guy out of the way for now and we'll come back to him later. Okay, now let's have a look at the user interface for this light. Similar to the original Streamlight Stylus Pro as well as the Streamlight MicroStream, you can see that it uses a rubber tail cap switch. The tail cap switch is nicely textured. It has a really grippy feel and the user interface is pretty much the same. You press for momentary on, you press all the way down for constant on, and then press again to click off. In common with the Stylus Pro as well as the MicroStream, this button is extremely stiff. It comes on without too much trouble, but then you really have to press it all the way down before the light will stay on. This I think is probably a good thing, because it allows you to activate the light easily just for searches and quick um, bursts of light. But if you want it to stay on, you really have to be very intentional about it. And that is a good thing considering that you don't want the light coming on and staying on in your pack or your bag. 
This rubber button here, uh, given enough time, will wear out. The good news, of course, is that like the Stylus Pro and the MicroStream, it is removable and replaceable. All you do is you undo this collar here and you can see it comes off. The button is recessed within this cap here. Uh, word to the wise, a lot of lint will a lot of lint will accumulate around this area. So make sure that you keep it clean. Otherwise, it might find its way into the body of your light. Unlike the micro stream, an additional cap did not come with this light. Uh, that's probably cost cutting on the part of Streamlight, but. It is a universal part that is available from Streamlight if necessary. So that's the tail cap switch. Uh, as you can see, there is no other switch or control on this light. It is, of course, a single mode only light, just like the Stylus Pro. Now let's have a look at this pocket clip. Now this pocket clip is only a single direction pocket clip, meaning that it's not a loop over clip which can be inserted uh, from both directions. And another thing which I didn't really like about it is that this part of the clip here that sticks up is a little bit sharper. I don't know why they didn't round that over a little bit more, but I found that when, when I'm holding the light, so if I hold the light with the clip towards my hand, it sort of digs in a little bit. So I do have to be quite careful about how I hold the light, either with my two fingers in the clip here, allowing the sharp bit to go between my pinky and my third finger or further down on the light uh, with the sharp bit between my second and third fingers. There are various ways of holding the light um, cigar style or even uh, like a conventional pen light, but you do have to bear in mind that that clip is a little bit on the sharp side. Not a major deal. As you can see, the body of the light is more or less the same diameter from here to here. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to carry the light bezel up, you could take the clip off, it is removable, and put the clip here facing the other direction. The advantage of that would be that you could clip it to the brim of like a cap or a hat and you could have a improvised head torch hands-free. Um, as the light comes from the factory, the clip is located here and it is oriented for a bezel down carry position. I think this is good because it protects the head of the light and it also protects the reflector. I've just left it there, uh, haven't needed to remove it and it's worked fine. The clip tension is good, holds well uh, on a variety of fabric. Uh, there's enough clearance here that you can fit it over your tactical pants uh, like 5.11s, and it will also hold on very thin fabric. Uh, at night, I've actually used this clip to my pajamas and it didn't fall out. I've also been able to clip it inside my waistband and even clip it to a variety of shirt pockets with no problem. Really good uh, pocket clip with the exception of it being a little bit sharp there. Now let's talk about the rechargeable aspect of this light. As you look at this light, and compare it to the original Stylus Pro, you'll immediately see a couple of differences. The first is this slightly extended section here, the reason for which will become clear shortly. And the other is this rather large collar at the front here. Now, if you watch Streamlight's own video on this, they will tell you that this collar actually slides up and conceals the light's charging port as well as the indicator LED. This is a micro USB connector and it has a bicolor green and red LED located just above it. You plug either a, uh, the included USB cable in here or you can use any available USB charger. I just used the one that came with my phone. When the light is charging, the LED shows red and when the light is charged, the LED turns green. It's a really nice system, really easy to see when the light is ready for use. Um, as it says on the packaging, the light is supposed to recharge fully in about two and a half hours. Um, in terms of battery life, you are supposed to be able to get 3.5 hours continuous. I recharged it when I got it, and so far I've used it 
every day for about a week and it hasn't shown any sign of needing to be recharged. So I'm going to keep running it and then recharge it as necessary. So the battery life on this uh, at the moment is quite good indeed. Now what about this collar here? Is it secure? Well, the good news is, is that it's really quite stiff. Uh, there's one O-ring here and I suspect that there is another O-ring somewhere underneath here to um, help it to seal at the other end. The collar will generally not come undone by itself. It does rotate slightly if you try and turn it. The one thing that I have found to be a little bit inconvenient is that if you try and turn the light on, zoom out slightly, if you try and turn the light on with one finger on this collar and you push hard, the collar will come undone, as you can see there. So it's only a factor if you have really enormous hands or you like to hold your light down here and manipulate it with your thumb. Likewise, if you put a finger up here, you could conceivably pop that collar open. So just bear in mind that when you're turning the light on and off, don't hold on to the collar and you'll be perfectly all right. Um, I have found that to be a minor uh, inconvenience, but it's sort of outweighed by the convenience of having the USB rechargeable feature. While we're here, let's have a look at the proprietary internal battery. Now, if you unscrew, the, the light is threaded here and it is also threaded here. If you unscrew this, it will give you access via another o-ring seal as you can see there to the proprietary streamlight lithium ion cell now you can see there it says uh, stylus pro usb battery made in china manufactured for streamlight it gives you an instruction to insert this end first so that you can't um, screw up the direction now, one thing which needs to be said about this is that this light will not accept AAA batteries, right? I've got a couple of AAAs here, but those of you who have the original Streamlight Stylus Pro will, will realize that this section here has been extended. And the reason for that, I think, is to prevent people from using AAA batteries. You'll see if you put two AAAs, they don't reach the end. And if you screw the tail cap switch on, it doesn't make contact. So you cannot actually use AAAs in this light. Uh, there's no doubt somebody out there who has found a way to bridge the gap between the two using a metallic spacer of some kind. But um, personally, I'll just stick with my cell here. So just bear that in mind if you buy this light thinking that it can be a sort of dual fuel light, it's not. It's uh, rechargeable only and I suspect that when that internal battery dies, you'll probably want to uh, replace the whole light <laughs> given that it, it gives you 300 charges and so far I've charged it once and it's lasted me a week. Now let's have a look at the sheath that comes with the light. Uh, this is the sheath, as you can see there. It's really, really simple. Um, just a literally a strip of nylon webbing, which has been folded over and stitched a couple of times, stitched there and stitched on the inside here. Uh, normally this would be okay, but the problem is that because the US, the Stylus Pro USB has this collar, this edge has a tendency to catch on the inside lip here. So if I put it in there, you'll see that it will sometimes catch on this lip, which is mightily, mightily annoying. Happily, I have found that the sheath that came with my Maglite AA LED looks similar, but does not have that lip in exactly the same place and this light will slide happily in and out of this sheath all day long. So what I've done is I've been using the Maglite sheath for the Streamlight and I've been using the Streamlight sheath for my Maglite. <laughs> Works very, very well and everyone is happy. Again, appearances can be deceiving. They look very similar, but they are not. The 
maglite sheath is actually quite a bit heavier material and it is better made than the streamlight sheath. I'm sure there are plenty of aftermarket sheaths available. Uh, you do tend to get what you pay for in this price category. And now let's have a look at the beam itself. As you know, the light is a single mode light, uh, 70 lumens. So there's the beam. Now, one thing which this light has in common with the uh, Streamlight MicroStream is the fact that it has quite a wide beam. Uh, it is quite floody. It is very useful general purpose beam. It does have a slight dark spot right in the middle there. It's quite difficult to tell, but there is a slight dark spot there. Apart from that, you can see it's got a very nice beam, uh, no concentric rings, no radial lines, and uh, no dark spots except for that one right there in the middle. Um, as a general purpose flashlight, I have found it to be really quite useful. It's a very good close-up light when you're looking, especially when you need a light that's got a little bit more power, uh, like looking under a table, looking inside a dark equipment case, or looking inside the back of a rack when you're backstage. Uh, 70 lumens, I think, is a good uh, middle of the road between the lower powered lights like the MicroStream at 35 lumens and the higher powered ones at around 200. I think it's quite significant that this light and the Maglite AA both are rated at 70 lumens. Obviously the Maglite has a lower secondary mode but the high does come on first. Uh, the Stylus Pro USB is a single mode light. Now let's have a look at some nighttime shots as well as beam comparisons of these two lights. Okay everyone, so here we are set up for our beam shot session. Just to let you know what you're looking at, the camera is pointed at a pair of cabinet doors. The doors that you're looking at are 5 feet or 1.56 meters across from edge to edge and the camera is located 2 meters away from the doors. I chose a grey rather than a white surface because I find that grey is a bit more neutral when you're looking at these things. White tends to wash out and give a false impression of brightness. The camera is set with its focus locked and the white balance has been set and locked. Finally, our exposure is also locked at the current level, uh, which is basically a couple of fluorescent lights, normal uh, room lighting. So let's begin. We'll turn our lights off. And as a control, here is a 3D cell mag light. Uh, this light is probably about 25 years old and still works as well as the day that I got it. So there it is. And that's the sort of focused mode. And there is the flood. How well re we remember that good old cardioid shaped hole in the middle. So that's a 3D cell mag light. Uh, this is the Streamlight Stylus Pro USB rated at 70 lumens. If we just compare it with the MicroStream, you can see there MicroStream obviously is much dimmer but I'd like you to observe that the beams are actually similar in the way that they are focused. In other words, they're quite floody with an undefined central hotspot. Uh, Streamlight Stylus Pro USB 70 lumens, uh, very broad beam, uh, very good for searching, that kind of thing. Uh, you can also see that the hotspot is not well defined. Now the camera does not pick up the fact that there is actually a very small dark area right in the center of the hotspot. Uh, in practice this doesn't make any difference but if you're somebody who's very very particular about having a completely clean beam this is something that you might want to bear in mind. Moving on we have the Maglite AA LED, Maglite AA LED, bring in the 
Stylus Pro USB. Now both of these lights are rated at 70 lumens on high. But of course, as you can see, the uh, mag light is more of a focused beam. Obviously, the mag light does go from spot to flood. You can see there when initially turned on, that is the flood. Again, the beam on the flood is not very consistent. There's radial lines and there's also a big, uh, there's a hole in the middle uh, which the camera does not show very well. <clears throat> Well, that was my review of the Streamlight Stylus Pro USB, the new for 2014 USB rechargeable version of the Streamlight Stylus Pro. I found it to be an excellent all around general utility close up uh, light, and it has actually replaced my mini uh, Maglite AA LED in day to day use. I especially like the fact that this light has a pocket clip and it is oriented bezel down. It clips really well in like a shirt pocket, the back pocket of trousers or the side pocket of trousers. I like the fact that the beam is nice and wide and apart from a small hot spot in the middle, it is generally quite clean, generally quite even. I also like the fact that the light is relatively lightweight. It's quite a bit lighter than this, obviously, because this uses AA batteries. This uses that proprietary lithium cell. I like the fact that it recharges easily and I can use a common charger for my phone, this light, as well as my bicycle lights. So definitely something to consider if you're looking for a new pen light style flashlight for everyday use or even professional use as a sound engineer or as a backstage technician. Thanks for watching. This is Bruno Luce for GLB Productions. Take care and I'll see you soon.